What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. I'm your host, Omar, Senior Cultural Partnership Strategist for Finish Line JD. Uh, last week, we had Carmelo, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Paul talk about voting and the Social Change Fund. And today, we have a very special guest, you know, the world-renowned Sloan Stevens. Sloan, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, you know, living. <laughs> day to day, but here, so that's all good. Cool. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So, speak to um your passion for giving back and how the Stone Stevens Foundation came into fruition. Yeah. So, when I was younger, I grew up playing in like an NJTL, a lot of it, it's called National Junior Tennis League. And I played across the street from my house. And my first experience was amazing. I had the best coach. He was so fun, he was so energetic. And he made me want to keep playing tennis. Like he made me want to come back all the time. And I think for kids and developing kids and kids who probably would never play tennis in their life, uh, like tennis is the best sport in the world. Like, obviously I'm biased, but um, I thought that, you know, there should be more kids that look like me being playing this sport and being able to get a racket in their hands and really enjoy it. Um, obviously tennis has given me so much in my life and I really wanted to like give that back. So with the Sloan Stevens Foundation, we literally do all of that. Like we make sure that the kids, like kids who would normally not ever play tennis or pick up a racket, have that opportunity. Kids who are struggling in school have that opportunity through education to better themselves. Kids who just want to like be active and be a part of something. Um, we give them that, that opportunity. And I think it's been, um, it's been a journey, but it's been a really actually really fun just seeing kids develop. And like, I feel like a mom because I'm seeing all these kids go from like, six to 10. And I'm like, wow, yeah. the years are going by. So I'm getting old. So um, it's been really like a journey, but such a fulfilling one because I've been able to see all these kids grow through tennis and education, which has been really cool. Cool. Now I would have loved to play tennis, but growing up in New York, I just never seen a tennis court like anywhere, unless you went to like a Chelsea Piers, like a sports complex yeah. or something like in that. In New York, it's like the most expensive because especially when it gets cold, you have to play indoors and the yeah. court, like renting the court, so it's, that's like literally the most expensive place to play like in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, tell me about how your experiences as a you know child growing up in Florida shaped what you do off the court today as an adult. Yeah, like I think growing up in Florida, kind of in a mix like California, we moved to Florida when I was really young. And um, it's just kind of shown me like I like I said, I want kids to be able to who look like me and who've grown up like me and experience the same things I've experienced to be able to experience tennis and experience what tennis can give to you and show you and the life that it can show you. And like I've seen so many things around the world and traveled to so many places and met presidents and like all those things were possible because I play tennis. So um like growing up in Florida, being able to meet all of these incredible tennis players, like through just being in Florida, because a lot of tennis is like a Florida sport. Like if the weather is always good. You can play all year round. Like there's just so many things and like the dots always connected. And through tennis, I was able to do so many things. And I think that's really important. Like um, kind of going back to Florida, like I always tell people like, you know, if your kid's good at tennis and you want them to be better and you want them to develop and you want to find a good coach and like you want them to be able to play more like Florida is a great place to go. The weather's always good. Like your kids can play as much as they want. Like there's just so many good things about Florida. And then like, obviously being from South Florida, there's other amazing things that I love, like the flea market and like all those other things <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do with tennis. But um, yeah, just growing up, like as a South Florida kid. Um, yeah. It's like, I always want to go back to Florida because I've had so many amazing memories. And like, I grew up with such a rich, like sporting environment in Florida. Nice. Yeah. Anytime I go that I love it, especially with the weather. And yeah, hopefully at some point, you know, I could be like a young Sloan and play with uh, <laughs> tennis when I'm out there the next time. So I'll take you out and play. We meet up and then I'll take you out and play. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, you see like all types of celebrities, you know, with whether it's like the NBA using their platform to bring awareness to different issues. So how important is it for, you know, different talent or entertainers to leverage that platform to bring awareness to different issues facing the black and brown community? Yeah, I think it's really important. I think that sometimes through social media, like social media is such a job sometimes that you forget mm -hmm. to like 
use your voice for better and to show people and educate people. Um, so I think over like this quarantine time, I've used it a lot to like educate other people and show them that there's like another side of things and there's there's struggles that, you know, people of color are facing and like bringing those struggles to light so other people can be aware of what's going on instead of kind of just like brushing it to the side. I think social media has brought a lot of the issues to the forefront because people are constantly on their phones. People are constantly on Instagram and Twitter and like consuming this information. So if you use your platform to just put out three more little things on your story of information or like a simple tweet, like that can help, you know, dozens of people like educate themselves on what's really going on in our communities, which is super important. Absolutely. And I think that's the beauty of this series here is more so to bring awareness and help educate people on what's going on and using, you know, powerful voices like yourself to get people to actually tune in and listen in and see what's going on outside their community, especially within like outside their ecosystem as well amongst like their friends. So. Yeah, definitely. Like I think a lot of people think of athletes or entertainers as just like, oh, we want to see what they're wearing. We want to see like what they're, where they're eating or where they're going yeah. to dinner, like stuff like that. And I think right now, especially is a perfect time to put out that like one extra story or one extra tweet because people are paying attention and you want to, you know, you are what you consume. You are what you read. You are what like who you hang out with. And I yeah. think like following people on social media. Like I want to follow people who have something good to say. Like, I don't care like what new Louis bag you got. Like, I want to know, like, you know, how are you supporting your community? How are you getting out in your community? How are you, you know, being active in your community? And I think, you know, a lot of athletes and entertainers have started to do that more just because that's what really matters. Like in this point, like our country is like a critical time. And I think now people are really starting to understand that. So it's been cool to kind of see like the transition of, you know, all of these people using their platform for the better. Yeah. And then with your foundation, what are some things you're working on now? And then what can we look forward to from the Sloan Stevens Foundation in the future? Yeah. So we're like never not working, but last, this past summer, we took everything virtual, obviously because of the pandemic and our kids struggle with like Wi-Fi and getting food and, you know, their parents working. We have a lot of DACA students, like all of those things, combining those things. And we kind of like try to mesh them all, make them work and then figure out what to do next. And this like obviously fall going into the beginning of the year, um, we're starting tennis back up again. We have eight courts at Centennial and we're starting our programming again. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is, was maintaining like the kids over the summer because normally, you know, they drop reading levels in the summer. They yeah. hang out, you go on vacation, you're not like, doing it then. We're all guilty of it, right? So um, yeah, exactly. So I think over the summer, we did a lot to make sure that the kids were still staying active. They were still reading. They were still like, you know, participating in camp. So they had those educational moments still happening. And then obviously like going into the fall, like into now, um, you know, their reading levels are the same. Their essay writing is improved. Like all those things are super important. Um, but yeah, so now the fall we are good reading levels and we are like back to playing tennis, but socially distanced because tennis obviously is a good social distance sport. So um, we're black, back to playing a little bit and just like getting those kids active, like physically and mentally. Yeah. And it's so important now, especially as we all practicing uh, social distancing, you think about all the social skills kids develop and actually be in the classroom, you're kind of like forced to read. So yeah. you know, what you've been doing is great because you know that goes a long way for the kids, especially since they're on, in like in a physical classroom. Right? Exactly, like just trying to keep them active, but like with their friends on Zoom and like with the reading, like it's so critical, like especially for kids because you don't really see how they react until mm -hmm. there's a pandemic. So yeah. like now we're like really seeing how they are affected and how they're reacting and like kind of trying to maneuver that and also be like super supportive and there for them and not only supporting them, but supporting their parents because no one's ever really been in this situation before. Right. So it's a lot of like maneuvering and understanding, but I think um, for the foundation, like, especially like Lindsay, my mom, everyone, like we've just really tried to balance out like what's been happening and kind of just show them like everyone's going through the same thing. And like, we just gotta, you know, together work through it. For sure. And then, you know, we have our election year, very important one come November 3rd. Yes. Um, speak to the importance of people going out to register if they haven't already and, and actually vote. Come yeah. Election. Like, I think it's critical that you vote. Like, I, I'm just one of those people, like, your vote matters, your vote counts. Like, you just need to get out there and vote. I don't care 
who you vote for, but you need to use your voice and your platform and your vote counts. And I think a lot of people just are like, oh, I never registered or I never did it. Like those people are the people you need to be like, hey, friend, like, did you register? Hey, like auntie, like, come on, girl, you gotta vote. (laughs) I think it's really important. Just like one person saying to another person, kind of like the social media thing, like, hey, you should vote or have you registered or have you like, have you looked in to see what like the whole thing? Like, I think that it's obviously really important, but more than that, like we are at a critical time in our country and a lot of things, it's not just like voting president. Like, it's not just like, okay, I'm voting for the president. Like, no, you're voting on all these props. You're voting on all of these different things that affect our country and, and each individual state and all of that. So like, I think it's really important that people educate themselves on what they're voting for, why Mm -hmm. they're voting. Um, yeah, and yeah, who they're voting for. Yeah, especially like on the, the local level, because I feel like people just get wrapped up on the on who the president's exactly. going to be. Exactly. The local like, level. It's not the one person just, on the ballot. Like, exactly. There's all these different things on the ballot. All these other people like, were there. Yeah, you have to read and educate yourself to know what you're what you're voting for. Yeah, and just and I feel like the way, pe- like almost like politicians almost deter you from voting, because I just realized you need to buy a stamp to mail in your, <laughs> your ballot. And that's yeah. me, I'm just like, you know, you think about all these like companies where you just got a prepaid envelope to mail in like a rebate for a phone or something like that. But yeah, exactly. Just those little things where you just got to, you know, be cognizant of making sure you're following all the instructions. Exactly. You know, and like what can disqualify your ballot and yeah. like your signature has to match your ID. And like my signature was not the same when I was like 16 years old so I'm like I'm going back and I'm like okay let me trace this it has to be perfect like because I'm I think it's important like I want my to get my little email that says like your vote was counted like Mm -hmm. I need that to feel good you know so um a lot of those things are critical but I think like I said like on social media and stuff like people just educating sharing one like that's like a crit like I saw one that was just it like told you like the five things that could disqualify your ballot which right. thousands of people shared but that could be helpful for you know me or you or someone else like and I think that's really important that we're using our platform and other people are using their platform to educate you know someone who might not know yeah absolutely you know we are a sneaker retailer with JD Sports and Finish Line so speak on your relationship with Nike and you know some of your favorite sneakers that you're wearing off the court or some of the ones that you're looking forward to coming out yeah, so I love shoes. I'm such a sneakerhead. Like I need to stop buying shoes. Um, and being with Nike, I feel like all the athletes are like sneakerheads. So we're all like fighting for the same yeah. shoes, which is so <laughs> annoying. Um, but you know, you have to find like your one plug that you know ha- is going to get all the good stuff. And like mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like, okay, I shouldn't pay for these shoes. Like I'm a Nike athlete. Like don't pay for it. Like I don't need it. Like I don't need it that yeah. bad. But some of them you just kind of gotta. Got you it. Gotta, yeah you gotta do it so um so yeah like my favorite shoes are jordan ones like those are like my classic like Mm -hmm. go-to like i love them in every color like i just love them like they're the most comfortable they kind of go with everything like you can wear them like high socks you can wear them with pants you can wear them with like a shirt with like like there's just so many things you can do to like dress them up so that's like my go-to shoe Mm -hmm. um I was really into off-whites for like a long time. And then I kind of need to like wean myself off because every time an off-white shoe comes out, like I don't need to buy it. Like Mm. that's not a thing. So I've kind of (laughs) like weaned myself Mm. off of them. Take a break a little bit. Yeah, take a break. Um, But last year I did, no, 2000, what year is 2020? So 2019, I did a collab with Jordan and we did like a Jordan with my like Nike court shoe. So they like, combined it and did like a high top version which was really cool Mm -hmm. um and they did it from like my birthday year so 93 it was like a white blue like yellow kind of spec type of thing which was really awesome um so yeah I'm just into like fancy stuff very cool things um Mm. but I try not to buy like too many yeah and now that it's like I don't need to be buying shoes that I'm not going anywhere in so (laughs) That's also like another good way to think about it and to save money. Like I'm not really going anywhere, so don't need to buy them. But when you do go somewhere, you need, you know, the latest and greatest. Oh yeah. You know, like but <laughs> when, you, when you have your latest and greatest, you bring out like your off-white Jordan ones, like that people don't have, like your UNC mm-hmm. or like something like that, where it doesn't matter where you are, who you're right. with, like you're beating everyone at the table. That right. day. So, I know we got, um, since you like ones, we have the dark mochas coming in. 
with like the brown on the back. I mean, you guys can like send so me I'll definitely a connect with Lindsay and send you a pair of those. I would Even be mad so you get it before everybody. Oh, oh my god! I, I'm always so jealous of the people on Instagram, like I said, who like post all of their stuff early. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I'm not looking at that stuff now because I'm voting. I'm focused <laughs> on what, what's yeah. important. I'm looking at who's voting and what I need to know about voting. Well, if you go vote in person, you can wear the dark mobiles. And I'm just like, oh. I know. And then my voting, well, I voted early, so absentee ballot. But I could still wear my outfit with my little sticker and stuff, you know. So exactly. it'd be a cute, like, election day outfit. Perfect. <laughs> Got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Cool. So, you know, we had JD and Finish Line. We love what you're doing. So we want to help you continue to do the work that you are doing, especially amongst the youth and tennis. So we want to make a nice donation to the Sloan Stevens Foundation. Oh, I'll have to checkbook real quick. Oh, you're bringing out the checkbook. Oh my yeah. God. He, oh my God. Oh, that's a lot of money, money. you guys. <laughs> we want to donate wow. 20000 to the Sloan Stevens Foundation on behalf of JD Sports and Finish Line. You know, I wish I was a kid and able to play tennis, but I love <laughs> doing with the kids. And I'm yeah. with you, so that's great. Oh my God, that is amazing. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that will do a lot for them. And obviously now in the time that we're in, that goes a long way. So I really appreciate that. That's very sweet of you guys. The least we could do. Least we could do. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, that pretty much wraps this episode. Community Voices again. I want to shout out Sloan and your team as well, Lindsay and Olivia. You know, you only as strong as your team. So I definitely want to show them love. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, I love chatting. It was so like... So informational. I loved it. Yeah, that's the goal. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Sloan.